it's that's what editing is for on on microphone on air on well air. it's not live though. live coming to you from Wommelsdorf pa via the microphone yeah it's always gonna do a little warm-up make things <laughs> natural um hello everybody and welcome to some kind of podcast i don't know if i'm gonna call this a merlin cast or not but it's merlin aka joe i've got a guest on here uh who has been here on the channel one video we did a podcast about a very bad, well bad we did video. we did sort of a test run for hopefully a sci-fi podcast or something we're planet of the apes but uh, uh amanda aka ula is back again hopefully you can hear me this time yeah i didn't do a good job with the mic but i'm trying out my my nicer mic that i hadn't used in a while it's just been a busy summer and i had the day with some a fair amount of free time uh we've just been so busy with things with moving and stuff like that and i don't know you just had to take a day off and i was like i want to actually do some content today and uh, instead i just played a lot of uh video games and stuff so what video games were you playing uh (laughs) this is you know i might keep this in this is another reason why i haven't done too much stuff around here because number one it's hot and we try to keep the ac off and we're right by the road there's trucks nearby there's a train in the distance and the motorcycle. And this is like late at night. This is like 11 o'clock, 11.30 we're recording. And there's still noise. So it's just, it's not the best for recording too. Um, but anyway, I had some free time today to actually get things done. And I just instead was playing some games. What games were you playing? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, I just kind of was bouncing around between a bunch of different old shooters on Steam. Like I'm finishing up the Half-Life games, Blue Shift, where you play as Barney in the first game. You actually are driving by on the the monorail thing as you're going to work, and you see mm-hmm. a guard stuck at the door. Mm-hmm. In this expansion, you get to play from the perspective of that guy trying to get into the security door. Ooh. So that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Finishing up Bioshock 2 because I liked the first game. And I'm playing uh, Fallout New Vegas because I heard a lot of my friends liked it. Ooh, okay. uh, but because I got caught up doing that, I didn't actually do any YouTube stuff. <laughs> Shame, shame, shame. So anyway, that actually brings us to what we're theoretically supposed to be talking about here. Uh, Ula, you wanted to rent some movies and you felt like watching the Tobey Maguire, Sam Raimi, Spider-Man movies. I did. Why, why was that, honey? Well, he's my Spider-Man. He's the one I grew up watching. He's the one I saw first. Um, I know there's a lot of love and maybe not so much love for some of the later Spider-Mans, but he will always be my Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. If I could be so bold as to correct you, it would be the Spider-Man. The English teacher's coming up. All right, Professor. <laughs> Hardly. I will say what I want to say. I will say what I want to say, and then I'll I swear I'll go away. Say just... it how I want to say it. Yes, the Spider-Mans. Let it be here, heard, as the it is Spider-Mans now. Spider-Mans or Spider-Mans? It's a Spider-Man. But... The spider, but, but your, it, like into the spider verse, oh. do they refer to themselves as the spider men? Uh, the spider people. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I, it could be. I guess you're talking about, about the spider lady. There definitely are various spider mans, but that would be spider men technically. See, this went off the rails right away, as they often do. But yeah, uh, what? Well, hey, Back your, to Sam Raimi. He's your, he's your spider man. Those he are your is, movies. He is. Um, a lot of feelings nostalgic feelings mm-hmm. uh remember them watching them growing up uh-huh um bruce campbell cameos very I, fun you i've been trying to introduce her to movies slowly mm-hmm. you haven't seen any of the evil dead movies right i have not seen ashley in his movies no <laughs> i do like that that's his first name though oh yes ash is awesome i still didn't watch a lot of the the series though i heard i heard some of it was good uh I, much like these movies i feel like i Returned on them again and had different feelings about them, but I like the Evil Dead movies. Yes, there was felt a little differently about certain things in some of the movies. Um, watching them as a slightly older woman. When's the last <laughs> time when you, I first saw them? When's the last time you watched them? Hmm, I'd say at least five years ago. Okay. Hmm, I can't remember the last time I watched them. <laughs> well, kind of like you, obviously. But, this was my Spider-Man too. These are my movies, mm-hmm. and I know you're not super into comic book stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, I grew up in with a lot of the superhero comics, and when I was a kid, I loved Spider-Man. You, you know, know this. I think yes. I've talked about yes. it enough. If people on my channel know, Spider-Man is one of my favorite superheroes, if not my favorite. Uh, I love him. 
especially around that age when those movies came out. Like when I mm-hmm. saw that first movie, it just blew me away. And yeah. I was in love with them. But as time has gone by, I feel like I, I got more critical. I didn't like how cheesy they were. And I kind of liked how they, some of the more recent Spider-Man movies have been a little more serious or they might have had better aspects of the character. Like, for instance, uh, you might not have noticed this, but mm-hmm. Spider-Man, you know, usually has a lot of the quippy jokes and whatnot. Yeah. And Toby really didn't have a lot of those. You may have noticed he didn't have a lot of, like, witty one-liners. He, he had a few, but no, he did not have very many. But there's some great classic ones, like, it's you who's out, Gobby. Or like, <laughs> I don't think so. Or, okay. Like, he's... Mm-hmm. We'll get into New it. New Gobby. Yeah, it's just like he has, he doesn't have like the best witty repartee. Mm-hmm. So that's that's something I had an issue with as a kind of comic book purist. Snob. Sno- comic book <laughs> snob. It's true, a comic book snob. But I will say, watching these again, mm-hmm. it was a good experience. I was happy to watch them again. And I, I found that I actually had a different perspective on them this time. <clears throat> okay. Um, but yeah, probably I'd like to hear your feelings too. So get into the first movie. Okay. We're not really gonna bother too much with summaries. If you you probably know about them, if not, you could do a quick quick search online. Also, no spoiler alerts here. If you haven't seen them at this point, that's your own fault. It's like twenty years, fifteen years, which is oh man, so long ago now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the first not movie, aging ourselves. Not not at all. Uh, the first movie is just you know the Spider Man origin story, Uncle Ben, Green Goblin. Uh, genetically altered spider in this version not radioactive actually so that is one thing that's different but uh yeah first movie uh watching the first one honey what stands out to you is positive negative overall feelings thoughts stuff (laughs) well we're so organized yes we discussed this as we were watching it I don't remember the CGI being that bad. Oh, the CGI. It was, it was so, the CGI does oh, not hold, rough. does not hold up well. No. I mean, cutting edge for the time, like they were pushing the boundaries, but like some of those are pretty uh, bad. Those are some rough scenes. They, I mean, it's still like it's bad mm-hmm. CGI. Like CGI then, we say it's bad now. It was there's, good at the time. There's still worse stuff out there, yes. e- even more recent stuff, but mm. it's pretty fake. <laughs> pretty fake yeah but it didn't bother me that much but it was only like certain action scenes but they're doing stuff they obviously can't do but and you may know this of course sam raimi from his low budget horror background a lot of in-camera stuff a lot mm-hmm. of editing lighting trickery a lot of practical effects clearly them doing their own stunts mm-hmm. there's a there was a lot of that too which i really appreciated like i noticed it wasn't as much cgi as i remembered there could have been a lot more cgi oh yeah and that would have dated it much worse yes I, I do appreciate the practical effects, even though I uh, might not be as good as recognizing them as you are. Oh, <laughs> you. Yeah. Well, I, I am a big special effects person uh, and I love practical effects. You mm-hmm. know, I just I've, I've really while trying to make a few of my own films, I've learned uh, oh, some of goodness. the uh, the benefits of really knowing your stuff. And if I ever do more, I I'd be a lot. I appreciate the craft of mm-hmm. like really something physically there and the time and effort, the artistry. And mm-hmm. I also, I'll say it here too, not to get off on too much of a tangent. <laughs> I think you're doing all the tangents this time. It was me last time. Well, that's true. Uh, <laughs> well, we have to both get some in there. You know, okay. Keep it balanced. But right. I, it's not that I hate CGI. I, I think there is good CGI. There's great CGI. I like that like, balance. Like when they put Steven Seagal's face on the front of the motorcycle helmet. Yeah, I forget what <laughs> channel it was that did that. But that, oh no, that movie. That was actually. That was a movie. It was uh, one of his straight to uh, DVD movies. Yeah, I'm was... sorry, not to change the topic, but oh well, honey, that'll have to be another podcast. <laughs> that'll be part two. I'm gonna actually after we're doing Spider Man, we're gonna talk. We, we need to put like a, a clip or an image of. I know this is just talking, but look All right. somewhere. All right, you need to show that image. Third, third tangent. So, the, I'm I'm having her do this to help me produce content, uh, but. The uh, honestly, I'm not good at staying on track. It's okay. It's a natural flow of conversation. <laughs> that's what I like. That's Whoops. how I do things. But honestly, honey, that's the thing. It gives me more of an incentive to edit it and put images together. And so, yeah, I'll find your 
badly superimposed Steven Seagal it's face. It's not my image. I'm not the, the one that produced I'm sorry. a movie sorry. with that image I don't, for the whole world to see I don't wanna, and to pay money for. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to that imply. That wasn't me. Didn't you know imply? Mine would have been you better. Say, you always, me with no skills would though, have done a better even job. Even though you claim to have written, you seem to have written every movie <laughs> and book that we ever Just look at. Just because I can guess the lines. And, <laughs> yes. Uh, the one you were referring to is what I meant. Yes, yes, I'll put it in here, around here, if you're still listening. Uh, anyway, she may not be. <laughs> anyway, yes, Sorry. the uh, practical effects. Where was I? I actually did lose where I was talking about. Before Steven Seagal. You just love practical effects. You've made your own movies. You oh. care so much for the craft. The, the macaroni and cheese. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Tell me more about the movie. What did you enjoy about the movie? Jeff? Oh, well, yeah, I, I enjoyed the practical effects. And, um, well, for a long time, the first movie was my favorite of the trilogy. Okay. Like, I loved that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I had, I I had, there was a lot of buildup for the second movie. I don't know if you remember, but like when Spider-Man 2 came out, they mm -hmm. hyped it. I remember seeing a trailer for it. But for me, the first one I thought was just one of those really great, solid origin stories i thought it was very true to the character mm -hmm. and i've always thought i said i thought that toby mcguire was really good at the young kind of unconfident peter parker he's mm -hmm. very relatable but he's kind of goofy nerdy mm -hmm. um but that once he becomes spider-man in the comics he gets more confidence he mm -hmm. he's got the humor when he's spider-man yes and i feel like in the first movie that's uh, for a long time i said that was when i felt like he did his best for that part in the comics and then okay. as the movies went on i'm like it seemed like he never really changed like he did in those stanley comics okay so that's one reason why yeah okay now i am not very familiar with the comics i had older brothers and i absorbed comic books vicariously i think through them sometimes mm -hmm. so not very familiar with plot, plot lines uh -huh. i really enjoyed the transformation in the movie i just thought it was so cool mm -hmm. i i really like how they showed it and displayed it and i just i thought that was a really cool scene in my unsophisticated way oh i mean not just the scene but like the whole movie the, mo the mo oh you mean like throughout the I, whole movie? I meant very specifically when he oh transforms very what? first oh i don't need my glasses anymore Ooh, oh look at me i got no. my little muscles no no that sequence Whoa, is good this stuff no out? that's the thing watching that it's no that stuff all worked for me like it's corny but it's still in keeping in the spirit of what i think spider-man was classic like so i know i agree with you there i i think that stuff is all fun yeah uh, i don't really have a problem with the first movie, uh, let's see, other things. I love, oh, I mean, Willem Dafoe is great in pretty much oh, everything. His, the way his face emotes, I greatly enjoy in that movie. Yes, there's that joke, uh, Weird Al song, Spider-Man, where he sings about the plot of the movie. And oh. he's like, yeah, he's like, he's scarier. He's got that dumb Power Rangers mask, but he's scarier without it on. Like I like if they very just, much agree with if, that. His... If, Yes. If he just painted his face green, like... I don't even know if you need to paint it. Like, he's... Well... I mean, I know to be to be the goblin character, but... Well, the thing is... His face is just scary. Ula doesn't really know something, so I'm, oh. I'm kind of happy to... I can't even say what it is, but maybe there'll be another podcast down the line. I'm really excited for it. What? Spoilers? Spoilers. Can't even say it, because... Is it for another Spider-Man movie? Yeah. Spider-Man movie? <laughs> Co correct. But anyway, yeah, I love... I will have Willem oh, Dafoe, no. and uh, he's a really good... Does As, he return? Maybe. Really? Yeah, maybe. But oh, uh, yeah, okay. we'll see. All right. but you don't know anything about certain things. I know things. nothing about nothing. <laughs> I know nothing about everything. Everything about nothing. That's useful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I <laughs> mean, like, I love him doing the whole, you pointed out this was right around Lord of the Rings, so he's got the whole dual identity thing, mm -hmm. talking to the evil side of himself, the goblin manifesting. Yes. I, I love how he hams it up there. But that was well done, and that also was kind of echoed the comics. We watched a, we watched a Spider Man animated series episode recently. Oh yes, the wedding. The wedding one, when we had people over, and that episode was hilarious, by the way. And they mm -hmm. and Harry even was kind of haunted by his father, like they did in the movie. So they've been pulling that from the comics for a mm -hmm. while too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think Uncle Ben stuff is good. I it all works really well. I like the the wrestling match. Bone Saw McGraw. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't really have any real problems with the first movie. Uh, what about MJ? Uh, well. 
because we we had multiple discussions about her throughout all three movies. I I will say that that is a good point because one of my big issues with the Spider Man movies, the Sam Ra- <laughs> the Sam Raimi trilogy, mm-hmm. I never really liked Mary Jane that much, and it's not that I don't think Kirsten Dunst is a good actress. I think she is, um, and she's playing the character. I th- I think in a more relatable, grounded way. But in the comics, MJ is is the girl next door, but she's also spunky. She's supportive. She's got her problems, but a lot of the stuff that they do to contort drama in these movies, like. Mm-hmm wasn't really a thing in, in the comics that I read, certainly not in the original ones from the sixties. It's just mm-hmm. like that. They, they just did her character very differently. Yes. And uh, I, I don't love the portrayal that much. Mm-hmm. And if I'm a writing perspective, it's actually just kind of annoying in, in the movies. Mm-hmm. Well, well you, I feel like you had maybe even more issues with this. You would, Cause, <laughs> cause the thing I love about Ola is when we're watching movies together, and reading pause it, pause it. i gotta talk we, about we it. gotta pause and she's gotta complain or we gotta have side discussions <laughs> it's great it's why i love her uh, but also you get so invested and i get invested uh, in stuff too but i'm always like analyzing stuff and thinking about like the behind the scenes that mm-hmm. you you're very good at just getting into the story and <laughs> i love watching your your emotion we got to record ourselves watching these things sometimes oh, no but like it's just, embarrassing no it's just but like it's just it's great. You get you get so into it, honey, and it's and seeing you get like, man, why is she doing that? Well, she really frustrates me. <laughs> so, back to the very beginning of the movie, uh-huh. she when they this is like five minutes into the movie. Spoilers. They, <laughs> no that, spoilers. What, five minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't time it. Um, when they're going to the museum, oh yeah, that's and right. She she acts like she Doesn't barely know knows Peter Parker. Yeah. But then he makes the comment about how, like, they lived in, they, I've lived next door to you since I was five years old. Yeah. And, like, she does let him take her picture. And maybe she doesn't, or pictures, she doesn't want to let her friends know how much she, like, how well she knows him. Mm-hmm. But then, like, they have a conversation later outside of their houses. And she's like, oh, I guess you can hear him yelling at me, referring to her dad. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you know, maybe the past, like, well, let's assume he's 18 because he's a senior past 13 years since mm-hmm. i was five years old i've listened to you get screamed at every day and it's yeah. like have you guys never ran into each other in your backyards before well i think i brought up to you that <laughs> now that's a good point because that always did bug me it's like they i guess they haven't really interacted that much but yeah the way they're acting it made it almost seem like they were closer but the way they were acting in the museum, it's like I brought up the example of how in your typical movie, she knows Peter, she's kind of okay with him, but in front of her friend, she's gonna maybe act a little bit meaner, yeah, you know, to kind of like compensate, but she doesn't, which is uh, which is annoying behavior, bad, but it's like more realistic, it's very typical, you know, I think in real life, instead of just kind of acting like she's never met him before, even though she defended him Who on the bus. Who are you, strange boy? Yeah, it's just, oh yes, but also don't be mean to him on the school bus. Let him sit down. Stop the bus. Let him get on. Because she's so great, so it's inconsistent. Also, they're all like 30, which always throws in these movies. Well, she's also, she's such a nice, caring person. She wants the bus to stop for him. Uh But I feel like the next scene, she's she's playing romantic games with his heart and hitting... Uh. Like, how is she such a nice girl? But then she's leading him on. She's leading another guy on. She's dangling it in front of him, then pulling it away, well, dangling it in front of somebody else. Like, I'm sorry, well, are you a nice girl? Are you a well, Ola, or just a tease? Honestly, that... I know this goes into some of the other movies I was gonna say, that, also. That's the, whole, that's the whole trilogy, really. But, like, she hurts so many men. Do you, it's, it's remarkable. Do you think that that's... And I guess I... This might jump around a little because I think this is the biggest thing that we were discussing and, and getting annoyed about in the movies. Is it bad writing, you think, or is it just annoying actions the characters are doing, or does it make them less likable? Like, how did we feel throughout it? Because it kind of gets worse, I think, in the second movie. <gasps> like the second movie, it gets really bad, I and then really did not like her in the second. Yeah, the, movie. <laughs> I think in the second movie, MJ is pretty unlikable. And the third movie, it gets better. You're a little more on her side, but they're Until both I'm not again. <laughs> but then they're both kind of unlikable a lot of the time. It's just, I don't know. It. I felt no in the in the second movie. She's I I find her 
as if I find her very unlikable. In the third movie, I felt she had some more relatable issues moments issues yes Mm -hmm. with well peter really was not listened to her she did have some legitimate complaints and legitimate issues Mm -hmm. but then the way she handled them i mean based on the way she dealt with things in the past two movies it made sense how she handled them but it goes back to her well you're kind of not a good person yeah so when you're trying to root for these two people to be together so it didn't make sense for them to be together we wanted in the third movie, Peter should be with the blonde-haired Russian girl next well, all right, door. Well, right, to give to give <laughs> to give <laughs> she's to, so look, sweet. To give Mary Jane some credit, you know, Peter has the whole "I'm Spider-Man" thing, and like, there's the whole thing where, okay, she's got the one g- boyfriend at the beginning of the movie when they're in high school, and then, okay, then she ends up being with Harry, and she's kind of like sort of but it clearly shows that she's interested Mm -hmm. so it's like what exactly do you want it's a little bit unclear and then she she ends up okay but peter's like okay i can't be with you and shuts her down at the end of the first movie so i get why she feels she has to move on even though but she still loves him and they still feel things so i kind of get that young people it's kind of it's frustrating but i could see it kind of being believable Mm -hmm. considering what peter did in his situation Right. Which, you know, it's representing people having things that they take on that make them feel like they can't get into a relationship. But then she did have a relationship, which Mm -hmm. is fine. You're allowed to have relationships. Uh And it progressed. And it's very difficult to understand how long these things are happening or the, the time. She was in a relationship long enough. And I don't know how long it was (laughs) to, to be with a man long enough. The astronaut. Jonas. Jonas son. Man wolf in the comics. Oh. They, they don't go into that at all. <laughs> oh, okay. That he he proposed to her and she accepted the marriage proposal. Even though even though it seemed like she really kind of wasn't sure about it, but she oh. still accepted the marriage proposal. She went through with all of the wedding plans and then ran out right it, before she was supposed to be at the altar. Even before that, she was and kind of interacting with Peter. Yeah. She was flirting with Peter heavily. Yeah. And yeah. that really <laughs> bothers me and i don't know anything from the comic so if he's a terrible person in, if the astronaut's a terrible person in no the comics, i am not no, aware of it hold I, on let me finish my thought please <laughs> please dear i'm gonna bring in that comic book knowledge in a second oh no Home okay Home. Home. thank you eat your bubble <laughs> so if he's a terrible person in the comments i don't know about it you said the comments i meant to say the comics uh, okay Shh. hush you thank you mm-hmm. <laughs> um but all we see of him in the movie, he's like a really nice, genuine guy, American hero. Mm-hmm. He loves her. He's devoted for her. He, she's doing what he wants. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, meh. meh. <laughs> Changed my mind. Oh, I'm right going to go the... run after this uh, super unreliable guy who, yeah. who stands me up and disappoints me and makes me cry, cry, cry. Yeah. Meh. And that's fine. You change your mind. But don't be so mean and bad about it. Don't leave him at the altar, standing in front of everybody, reading a note from you. It was horrible. Do it like two hours before you go to the altar so he's not standing there. I don't know. I'm just thinking like Mary Jane runs off to Peter in her wedding dress. He should be thinking, well, wait. I know red we, flags. Like, it's kind of a red flag. I know that we have like this bond, but you did this to somebody with that. I mean, yeah, uh, I don't know. <coughs> I know it's dramatic, but. Think about it for a second. That is just not good. But uh, as far as like comic book knowledge goes, yeah, the <laughs> Jonas, on me. yeah, Jonas' son is actually like pretty much as he's presented, he's all American, good guy, mm. you know. I just he turned into a wolf, but you know. Well, I mean that, that <laughs> happens to us all every now and then. Yeah, it's just metaphorical. Mm. I want to do that werewolf movie. The sometime. wolf, the wolf inside me. Of wolf and man. Uh, <sighs> but yes, I guess it's we're on the second movie. Uh, we are frustrated. Yes, we've gone. We've we'll, gone there. Well, we'll, we might come back to MJ again, but okay. <laughs> of course we will. I will say this. Like, present. <laughs> I want to tell you something, because when it comes to Spider-Man 2, okay. Are you telling me or are you telling them? I'm Who ta- is you? Well, I, I'm, I'm using the hand gestures towards the microphone, like I'm speaking towards the audience. I know, but they can't see that. I know. That's why I'm narrating it. Like, I have to make <laughs> things clear. I am, in fact talking to the audience but i'm also talking to you because oh, I'm, okay. I'm sharing this with you i want y'all to know this yeah y'all you all oh man i want you to know you and the, and the audience i don't <laughs> this is i'm serious Sorry. this is a big moment okay i am sharing something with you that i don't think i've ever sh- and the audience that i have never shared with anybody publicly oh no what is it 
The first time I ever got disappointed by a movie that I anticipated, Mm -hmm. it was Spider-Man 2. Oh. And I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure why. I couldn't explain it. But I Mm -hmm. remember seeing... I loved the first movie, like mm-hmm. I told you. I loved it so much. Yeah. Watched it several times in the theaters. And I saw the trailer for the second movie on a DVD or something. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, it's, and they had that scene where they're, they're together. Like, do you love me or can we kiss? And then the car comes through the, the oh, diner and, and they like got the, the slow mo scene where he saves her. And then Doc Ock comes in. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. it's Dr. Octopus. Yeah. And he's awesome. I got, and I was so excited for Spider Man, too. Like, I remember. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of anticipation. I was like, I don't know, 14 or 15 at the time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just seeing it, I remembered, I and I, I usually am pretty good at articulating these things. Mm-hmm. I did not like it as much mm-hmm. as the first movie. Mm-hmm. And I want to hear your thoughts about this. Okay. And as I told you, like the, Spider-Man 2 is like the pinnacle and the, and the video game that they tied in. Like people love Spider-Man 2. When they talk about like for a long time, like top oh. superhero movies, mm-hmm. like top superhero movies. Spider-Man 2, for a long time, was at the top of the conversation. Okay. It might still be. So I was wondering, mm-hmm. as a person who isn't an expert on comics, mm-hmm. why you might think that is as a viewer and uh, how much you like it. Because I felt very differently about it this time. Like, I always liked mm-hmm. Spider-Man 2. I thought it was very good. But I was I always liked the first one more. And I always heard that that other one was, oh, man, this, mm-hmm. is, the, this is such a great movie. And so I'm curious. I don't know what you think uh, uh, comparing the two. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Drop it, Ula. Drop those thought bombs. Ready, watch it. I'm going to drop this beat. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So I remembered, well, I remembered the least about the third movie. I feel like with the second movie, I remembered less about it than I did the first movie. Okay. Once the second movie was on, I started remembering more about it. So I feel like I remembered the first movie the most. Maybe I had watched the first movie the most, but I feel like... The first movie was the bigger movie for me personally. Okay. Um, hmm. I, so I think I'm also a, more of a first movie person. Oh, we are. I didn't know this. This is new, people. I, this I is new to me, too. I never really thought about it before. Cool. Um, you, if you're with me on these podcasts and I expect these questions. Well, I didn't plan ahead. Well, I, that's, I guess I got you it's all, it's But it's, hey, it's, it's very genuine, then. I like <laughs> well, it. that's good. It's raw. Yeah. I always liked... Doc Ock, Mr. Octopus, Doc Ock. Mr. Ock. If <laughs> you call him that, it's Octopus. doctor. He got that doctorate, PhD, and he also like physics, really or... wants you to know about it. Uh, we, what? Yes. Anyways, yes. Doc Ock. Um, Doc I Doc always Doc. thought he was a really cool no. villain. He also didn't do a whole lot in that movie. We kind of forgot he was in it for a while because we didn't see him for a while and then yeah. eventually we got back to him um he was sympathetic which was nice well so was Green but Goblin. he also well, a whole lot less he was such a meanie meanie it's gonna say the d word well but i don't want you to have to censor me but he was such a d um, he was such a meanie pint, meanie pants. Well, he was the green meanie, as uh, Ted. <laughs> he Ted was the said. Green He's the green meanie. I mean, he was also a meanie when he wasn't green. He was a regular old meanie. Anyway. Yes. So. <laughs> sound whiny. Um, <laughs> so, and I thought for Doc Ock being a scientist, he did some really stupid things. Well, movie. Like. Ah, oh, yeah. No, like, safety oh, glass. Let's, let's not give anybody safety goggles. Let's not. Like, we want them to watch the experiment, sure, but, like, let's not ensure their safety, well, like, even to the slightest extent. I know it's a comic book movie, but have the lab somewhere far away from the city and have them watch, like, by camera halfway across town or something. Remote. Yeah. I, yeah. Put them in a bunker next to it, even. Like, Glass you're going to have shielding, them there. You know. Put some sunglasses on them when you're creating the sun at minimum. Suits, safety I don't suits. Know. Yeah, it's pretty. Anyway. Yeah, pretty shoddy, mad. But you know, mad science. You know, that have a bunch of giant glass windows there that can explode and shoot glass shards into your wife. Yeah, I don't know. kill your wife. Yeah, turn you evil. Well, he, but remember, um, he had an ego. He thought he could handle it. He I he was a very overconfident. Know, That's I his know. flaw. You know, his also arc. 
Harry was running the company at that time and he just wanted to make money and get a Nobel Peace Prize and so he wasn't looking into anything safety wise. Yeah. Or at least his father was intelligent. Yeah, it's clear he didn't inherit <laughs> too much of the, the science brain. Well, you know, yeah. Peter got him through science, his, uh, science class in school. That's true. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to whether or not I think the movie's good, I guess. Yeah. So I kept forgetting, like, well, it took... I don't know. There's a we lot. were with things, and then there's a lot of things happening in the movie. Big gaps. Which I don't think necessarily is a problem. No. But maybe they weren't connected well enough, well, or they weren't woven together, or we spent too much time away from certain plot threads. Well, I, I didn't think it was integrated as well as it could have been. May, maybe not, but I do really like the arc where that they re uh, they do the whole spider-man no most more storyline i think it's amazing spider-man number 50 you know classic storyline where he you know is not feeling well gives up being spider-man you know and and this you know, he's being sick so they just think okay what if it's great if i am free of this mm -hmm. that whole arc i thought was interesting him trying to you know give up on it and struggling mm -hmm. with not doing it anymore how i mean that i think I really liked the way they did that, and mm -hmm. I think that might be another strong element of the movie for people, is it's kind of that, really pushing what it means for him to be a hero, basically. Yeah, I really liked that plot, too. However, when I'm reading a really good novel, mm -hmm. I, you know, what keeps me going from chapter to chapter, mm -hmm. you know, them leaving me on those little cliffhangers, them bringing me back. So, and I know it's a movie, we're not stopping and starting, mm -hmm. but... What's keeping me going from scene to scene? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're staying on a certain plot point for so long and it takes you so long to get back to the other plot points and not that I want you to jump around a ton either, mm -hmm. but like what's, what's keeping me going? Well, what's the pace? What's, what's making me yearn for more <laughs> movie? Well, it sounds to me like you would have liked to have Doc Ock peppered a little bit like, Ooh, what I, like I cut briefly like, the lab of what he's doing and then, because he was doing so, he rebuilt that whole lab. It's just like, oh yeah, we and, cut back to him. Oh, now and he's just all of a sudden, like, okay, it's all ready, it's all done. Okay, like they could have, like, they could have made like a time to clock, you know, like where Peter doesn't have his powers. Meanwhile, slowly Doc Ock is building, getting closer to his goal to wrap up tension, maybe or or showing um, him and like the the AI arms like learning to to work. Together, Integrate. showing something with like Ooh. the AI mind and his mind, like merging, dueling it out a little bit, like we did in the the first movie with the the dual um, personalities, personalities. Mm -hmm. Which I know that's a little bit of a retread, but it's they little, do that a lot. It's a little different. I like the fact that the the arms, which is kind of in the comics too, he sort of has like a weird bond with his arms. We could have explored that a lot it, more. It's kind of like there. It's like a more animalistic primal aspect of them because mm -hmm. like how they're snake like and they're almost like they're they're not human whereas you know the first movie it's just like the dark side of himself and mm -hmm. of course it's the same thing where he's manifesting his his pride or whatever but yeah they could have delved into that more but i remember you were right as we were watching i was like i was absorbed into the story but i also would cut back to doc i'm like oh yeah i forgot he was in this movie oh yeah that's right <laughs> oh that's right doc Ock is here <laughs> and it's like oh yeah remember that was happening in this movie Oh, right. Yeah. Aunt May. Oh, yeah. She's losing the house. But, uh, like. oh, uh, and I, I think another thing, too, for people is the fight, the CGI is much better. The fight it is. sequences, it is. it's aged better. And it's still the, not perfect, but it's not as no, bad. No, it's a lot better. And the fights with Doc Ock are pretty good. And the scene on the train is great. Mm. The scene on the train, I think, is what makes it for people. It's really that, great. That set piece. I loved. I got so into that. That scene. Where he's just like pulling the that, wife. That ah. really. When I first saw the movie, I forgot about that. Uh -huh. It reminded me of that. I When I first saw that movie, that was like. That was it. The the bomb. <laughs> to use my, my old uh, slang uh -huh. when it came out. That oh, was the bomb. That's so cool. I loved that scene. Yeah. It was so powerful to me back then. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, you just like, ah. Oh. I don't know. I, I guess it was kind of cool to, after all this time watching Spider-Man 2 again, with just putting it on new expectation and watching with you mm -hmm. uh, and like re-experiencing it after several, quite a few years. I don't even know last time I watched it. Making you see it through my eyes. Uh, yes. <laughs> and, and honestly, kind of these movies as a whole, which I'll get to, maybe we can include it, but. I feel like I, you know, you appreciate things from a different point. 
And mm-hmm. I, I feel like I usually watch these when I was younger as a kid, teenager, maybe in my early 20s. Mm-hmm. I'm appreciating some of the jokes, the perspectives of what the characters are going through in a different way. In some ways, I appreciate it more. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of good monologues, a lot of good ideas. And mm-hmm. I still love the character for the same reasons I liked him when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I think these movies show that. Yeah. And Spider-Man 2, I thought, really, I think, elevated what the first movie did well and was a really good sequel. And I think it, it did fit together very well. but. I do think that you needed the first movie. You, I don't think the second movie was independent. It did build off the first one. You know what we didn't talk about? The opening credit scene of this movie. Oh. The second movie. Oh, yes. The, that just made me think of it because it was like oh, a review of the first movie. Yeah. Or the, a, a the, summary. Yes. I mean, very good. Yes. This opening sequence of the second movie. I think that's Alex Ross. If anybody knows they can tell me, I think that's him. I think they got him to hand. He does hand paintings of... um of comic books like comic books are, are hand painted she's gonna look now she's gonna fact check me <laughs> i am it's like who did the painting okay you're gonna do it yeah keep talking but yeah she's gonna check it but if it's not him it's in his style where they they hand painted these panels of what happened in the last movie in the first one and they're beautiful i love uh, not alex ross um i think it is also but yeah like whatever his name is I, I think it's the guy that did kingdom come but i love his style and just that and it's funny we went to the third movie and it was just a clip show of the second movie like man they uh they, they had Alex to, Ross. Yeah, I was right. It's Alex Ross. Yeah, see, I knew my stuff a little bit. Sometimes. I was just, I thought, you could tell because his character is always a bit rounder. But yeah, mm-hmm. hand-painted comic book panels. I'll have to use a, a picture here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I thought you liked that too. It was so cool. It was very cool. And it's like, in, just in case you didn't see the first one or it's been a while since you've seen the first one, which let's sum it up for you. Which ya. is Bring good. Bring back. And Spider-Man's pretty well known by that point. But still, I think that if, <laughs> I don't know if that's a negative to a movie being a sequel but i do think that it it's it's i think it requires the first movie which is a really good foundation Mm -hmm. i'm not sure which one i like more i think i think it's one of those things where i think spider-man 2 had more of those high moments that i think were better than the first movie Mm -hmm. but i still think the first movie was better paced and and well put together more so that's what i think Mm -hmm. you mostly i think i like number one better yeah so yeah Ditto. I think we agree. <laughs> but uh, I guess just getting to the third movie, this is the one <laughs> which for a long time, you know, people hated. That's the yeah. meme. You got the emo Spider-Man, the dancing jazz thing. I oh, The hair. The hair. His face. I'll just say it right now, honey. Yeah. I never had a big problem with this movie. Mm. Like, I know that, like, I had an issue with oh, all of them. so cringe. They're a bit corny. But I don't, I remember liking it when it first came out. Uh-huh. I didn't, I didn't get the hate. And I never thought it was. I thought it was about in the same league as the other two. Wow. I, I don't think it was like a huge dip in quality. Uh-huh. Like some people hated it so much. It's fine. It's, it's, yeah. I don't know. I, I do think Venom was a bit shoved in there, like everyone said, but mm-hmm. some, of, some of my favorite things are in the third movie. <laughs> well, I definitely didn't hate it. And I just thought it was so silly and ridiculous and like, really? Uh-huh. And like embarrassing. <laughs> well, the trend of the emo Spider-Man stuff was pretty pretty bad. Yeah, didn't age very well. But I thought it was. I kind of like. I mean, it, it's the whole thing's kind of cheesy. So I feel like it wasn't much cheesier than the rest. But it was a little too trying to be too in vogue and yeah. you know hip. Well, watching it this time around. Oh, you Get saw me. I, I had to cover. I was covering my eyes for some of the scenes because I was just like, oh, but, no, I just can't but honey, watch it. No, but honey. But it was kind of Ula. a good thing. The fact that they yeah. created that feeling you, in me. The scenes were like oh. Spider-Man is like trying to mess with Mary Jane with uh, with Gwen Stacy and is trying to be really mean and vindictive to her with the dance. Yeah. Like you were cringing and covering your eyes because you, you were so I invested in, in these characters and, feeling, yeah. and what they were doing to each other and tearing each other. Like, oh. and on, and you know. It's what he was trying to create. It was what he was trying to make me feel. Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi. So, and so he accomplished his goal. So that's he not made really, me feel uncomfortable. So some of he the he made me not like it. So the drama it worked. was the the soap opera esque element of it, which superhero comics often are. It kind of worked in the movie for a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I needed three villains though. No. No, it did not. I also, sorry, slightly changing. I also thought it was kind of funny. We talked about this a little bit. How uh-huh. when 
Harry got bonked on the head. Bonk. Bonked <laughs> on the head. He got bonked. He did. He got punked. Speaking no, of. he got bonked. <laughs> the B. A bonk. He got bonked. Um, he became so stupid. <laughs> he got. Oh, la di da di da. Oh, let me cheesy smile at you. Do I have any girlfriends? He kind of reverted to how oh, he was in the I first one. I love you guys. Except he became like a he, painter and a cook, a chef, and like he got all talented. He got, he got talented with a bunch of random stuff, <laughs> which was really cool. But he was like, nobody's home. Ooh, but you know what? What? I think Harry might have been the best villain in the trilogy, though. Like when he gets the what? when he gets that? the when he gets that it comes back from his amnesia and he starts to he tear is, like he is so because he knows Peter so well ooh. he can he hurts him so good like when he like I, I remember watching it when I was a kid like where he gets Mary Jane to basically say he doesn't love she say she doesn't love Peter anymore mm-hmm. like and he's just watching far away kind of like manipulating it and then he does the whole like oh it's I'm the other guy Peter and then smiles back at him like ooh oh that that. That just destroyed Peter. Oh, and the scene with the that ring? was so good. That was that was a great villain move. It was so. And I don't know. Like looking at his father, the first Green Goblin, just capturing Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. Well, that just motivates him to save her. Yeah. But have her tear away. Just be like, no, and uh, you know, as emotional, but no, I don't love you. I'm with somebody else now. Bye. Yeah. And then for his best friend to be the other man. Mm-hmm. That's that's really good villainy. That's really great villainy. Yeah. But honestly, though, what? It's all about the Sandman. <laughs> tell me why. <sighs> tell me why. Tell I mean, me why. I'm sure it's been talked about, but like the the <laughs> the scene where he becomes a Sandman, he's reaching oh, out for the locket yeah. with his daughter's mm-hmm. face on it, the music, like. It's kind of mm-hmm. almost like a great short film. I think that they do a lot with just the images and the music. I think animating all the sand particles, that, was that, really cool. that holds up really well. Mm-hmm. I like Thomas Hayden Church. He, he played the Sandman. I like his grounded kind of every man. Like he's, mm-hmm. you know, he's, uh, they do a good job with all these movies of making all the villains kind of human mm-hmm. and sympathetic, which is what a lot of the Spider-Man villains are. Yeah, they're not all just monsters. And you know, it's not that that's black and white, which is true to life, I think. And I just, I love that you, even though he's a villain, you kind of care about him. You want him to succeed. Like he, he's got almost a tragedy to him. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and I love, and I think it might also be the orchestral score that goes with them. Like the really yeah. do, do, do. It's like, I'm not a bad person. I just had bad luck. And we were talking about like, what does that mean? They don't know much about him. How bad is he? Yeah. Ooh. Also, why he became Sandman. Why couldn't he, um, Oh, not yeah. become a criminal and like put himself on show as a Sandman and make money that way. Well, or... there's a villain, uh, Electro, in the comics who he had he can like pump out a million volts of electricity and he he could like get paid to power the city for people and, oh, he, and he robs okay. robs banks. So well, there... that's that's dumb comic I mean, book villains for even, you. <laughs> even just like let scientists experiment on him, tests and ooh, like what like, are they let let. Different people check him out. Like what are the, how can we repurpose like, this? What's the use of it? Pay me to look at my body, my <laughs> sand body, my sand particles. Fix if you wanna. If you wanna look at me, you gotta hey, fix my daughter. Wouldn't he be good with construction? Maybe like I'll sandblast your house for you. <laughs> Give me some money. I'll make sand castles for your kids. Like, stay, stay away from the scientists because scientists are evil in all these movies. That's true. Just go around and sand ba- sand blast people's houses for them mm. or their decks. Like sand their <laughs> sand their wood. People will pay you for that. You'd be the best carpenter. Yeah, yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then you can heal your daughter. You know, get well, to the hospital, get the stuff she needs. Well, then the movie would be over. It'd be less interesting. Gotta have I conflict. don't care. <laughs> I want things to make sense. Well, look, he had a criminal mentality. Maybe he's on the run. It might have been hard for him to. Of course, he could have changed his, his face. I don't know. He's a sane man. Bring he can dream. do what he wants. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was that? I, don't, I, was, oh, I was trying yeah. to go with it, and I failed miserably. miserably. Uh, but, yeah, no, I liked Sandman. He was good. Um, how, how did you feel about him uh, killing Uncle Ben? That twist that they kind of put in there. Ah, I don't like that. 
Well, no, it was shoehorned in at the last minute. Yeah. It, this is, oh, it's the third movie. Got tied in. Let's, let's, uh, yeah. Let's make this more than it was. Nah, Unnecessary. Don't need it. Okay. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so dumb. it sounds to me like you don't like the third movie. Like, okay. I, no, I like it. Oh, you do? I like some of it. Okay. Okay. I thought you liked it. I don't like other parts of it. Over, I, I like the three movies. I really enjoyed watching them again with you. It was great. There's parts of it that I think are very silly. So, but I, it, they're very entertaining too. So, I guess we probably have the same rankings then. For us, would it be like one, two, three? Yeah. And, but would you agree with me that the third one isn't like dramatically worse than the other two? Like, I mean, if we, if we were saying like, I don't know if we want to rate them, but like, I don't know. If, if like the Spider Man movies are like an A minus or B plus range movies, okay. Like I don't know, would Spider Man three be like a B or, or do you think they're higher than that? I don't know. I, how much more would you? <laughs> I mean, I I don't even know what I would rate them. I just think that I think the first two movies are really good, and I think the third movie is pretty good. It's just a little bit more messy because they threw Venom in there and he wasn't very good, and you know, yeah, yeah. But I think it wrapped the trilogy There's pretty well. There's just too much going on. Mm -hmm. I think I'd give it whatever. I'm not giving it a score. Whatever the scores are, that one might be like half half a point lower. Oh, so it's not that much thing. different. Half, half a score lower. Depending on what the scale is. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. I'm also I'm not super harsh on movies, I think, like you are. You think I'm harsh? I do. I give movies the benefit all the time. Con you give everybody the benefit all the time. Oh, but I thought you're it was such harsh. A, you're such a weakling. You just contradicted yourself. Am I hard on movies or you, am I? You are hard on movies. You give everybody, like people, uh. bodies. <laughs> you know what the thing is? <laughs> you're easy on those bodies. I can be hard on movies. The dead ones in the back. But I try to keep in mind the people behind them, you know? Well, now that you've made your own movies and you know how much it takes and the uh, work, oh, just got to give them a break. Making movies is hard, though. It's it's, <laughs> it's like not a, it's, I don't even know if it's that fun, like if I was passionate about it, so. You want to do more. You're like, oh, I can't wait till I make my next film. <sighs> well, so, time. So, shush, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, you love it. My, yeah, I know. Well, yes, I want, <laughs> I want to do at least a few more movies at some point, mm -hmm. but uh, honestly, I need to do more content on this channel and like. Get to a recording schedule. Give us more. We want more, Joe. Yes. Well, it, please. The people. <laughs> well, on that note, if anybody is still listening at this point, of uh, course not, you silly man. You'd be surprised. There might be a few people hanging in there. If you got any, just my mother. No, oh, I don't. I don't <laughs> think, my mom won't listen. I, I don't think uh, either of my mothers probably listen to any of these that much. No. Um, anyway, uh, yes. Sorry. Let us know what you think about the Spider-Man movies, Amanda. Mm -hmm. uh, Ula hasn't seen uh, the Andrew Garfield ones, I know. No. But you've seen some of the more recent Tom Holland ones. Yes. Except for No Way Home. No. So I don't know if we'll, yes. we may do Spider-Man movies. We we have Sci-Fi Corner uh, to watch, do sci-fi movies and stuff. We want to sort of be doing that semi-regularly. After but we move. We're going to move. Hopefully we'll have a better recording space. I'd like to... I mean, I'll be going back to teaching soon, but I'm thinking if I could do like a video a month or a podcast a month, that would be cool. After we get married. After oh yeah, that's right. We're getting married, so <laughs> honestly, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, uh, next couple soon. next couple months, yeah. I might not be too much content actually, but maybe I'll do a video too before then, uh, stating that officially. Not that I've done that much this summer. <laughs> uh, it's, been a lot. it's been a lot, but it's okay. I appreciate everybody who's sticking around, and yeah, let us know if you have any suggestions or. If you like this or, or there's any movies you think I have to watch. Yes, if if Ula hasn't seen something or if you assume she hasn't seen something, a movie she probably haven't. If you kinda like <laughs> this talking like this, let us know or suggestions about how to change it and movies you'd like us to talk about or if you want to see us on camera. Don't be super mean. Ula yes, try not to be mean. We're, <laughs> we're, we're nice on Merlin the Mighty, that's one of the requirements. I'm but sensitive. She's very sensitive, so she's new <laughs> she's new to the whole YouTube <laughs> online content thing, although she isn't actress oh yes i've i've acted in two russian films did you play like a, a russian mafia princess in college or something was that what it was i can't talk about it oh you can't talk about my role as Gafrinia. top secret Gafrinia. 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 
uh, yeah. So uh, that's the podcast. Uh, I usually end it by saying stay magical. So Ula, you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. Stay, stay magical. Stay magical. <laughs>